Hey, how's it going? Testing out a new mic today, so let me know if the audio quality sounds better. Anyways, optics other than iron sights on handguns is an interesting topic. When I picked up my Walther PDP about two and a half years ago, I chose it partly because it has an optics cut and I wanted to try out a red dot on a handgun. In regards to red dots on handguns in general, there's definitely a learning curve and I shot worse with the dot for a little bit, but I quickly adapted and my shooting improved. I shot handguns almost exclusively with red dots for a little while there, but these days I'm back to shooting irons and red dots about 50-50 on handguns. With close to equal recent experience with both, a red dot is objectively faster, but that really shouldn't come as a surprise. But that's enough yapping about red dots on handguns. Onto the dot I went with, which was the Holosun 507C. Full disclosure, Holosun has no fucking clue who I am, and I purchased this optic with my own money. This is the 507C, not the 407C. The 407C is cheaper, but does not have selectable reticles like the 507C does. It simply has a dot. The 507 has three reticle options, a 32 MOA circle with a 2 MOA dot in the center, just the dot, and just the circle. I've been shooting it almost exclusively with the circle reticle. The circle dot looks too crowded for me, and the dot is too subtle. The circle is just right. Bit of a side tangent, but what would be more ideal is something like the Primary Arms ACSS Vulcan reticle, which has a fucking massive circle with a 10 MOA chevron in the center. The massive circle helps you find your dot or chevron in this case much more quickly. The circle, by the way, is an enormous 230 to 250 MOA circle depending on your model. Holosun actually makes a version of the 507 with this reticle, which I hope to have a look at in the future. But back on track. I've used the 507C almost exclusively on my PDP. I tried it on my PSA dagger and it would not hold zero to save its life, but I'm willing to bet that it's actually the dagger's fault for that. It holds zero fine on the PDP after about 2500 rounds. Now on to specs. Holosun advertises no parallax, and at least in my normal use, I have not noticed any issues here. The dot being off-center in the window doesn't seem to affect point of impact is what that means. This dot mounts using the RMR footprint, which is very common and robust. It has 12 brightness settings, 10 daylight, and 2 NV. It uses a single 1632 button cell for power. It advertises 50,000 hours of battery life on brightness setting 6, though two things will significantly reduce battery life. Firstly, this is a shake-awake optic, so when you are carrying the dot, it'll likely be on 100% of the time. Second, I find that only brightness settings 9 and 10 are bright enough for use during the daytime with sunlight. For these reasons, I suspect in real-world use, your battery won't last very long. And wouldn't you know it, I'm correct. I have to replace the battery about every three months these days. Back when I carried this optic, it was closer to once every month or two. When the battery gets too low, the optic will flash on and off annoyingly to alert you to the dying battery. It's good to know, but when the reticle blinks on and off, it's way too long and causes you to miss shots if you're still trying to use it. That probably won't be an issue, but something to keep in mind. Thankfully though, you can easily change the battery via a tray on the side of the optic. That means you don't have to dismount the optic, losing zero, to change your battery. It also has what's called a solar failsafe mode, which really is just a failsafe. Unlike some newer supercapacitor models Holosun offers, the solar mode does not charge or work in unison with the 1632 battery. It's literally just there for when there is no battery or a dead battery in the optic. It will attempt to use ambient light to illuminate the reticle, but this comes with some issues. One situation is if you're shooting from a shaded area into a brightly lit area. The dot won't be bright enough to actually see well. Vice versa seems to be one of the few situations where the solar failsafe is actually usable. That's not all the solar panel does though. There's also an automatic brightness mode which can be accessed by pressing and holding the plus button for 3 seconds. This mode adjusts the dot's brightness in real time based on how much light the solar panel is gathering. There's also a mode called lockout mode, which can be cycled to in the same way. In this mode, pressing the plus or minus buttons does not change dot brightness. On to durability. I'm not going to do any destructive testing on this optic, but honestly, the fact it has survived over 2500 rounds on traditional handguns counts for something. That's a lot of times it's been accelerated forwards and back on the slide without any issues whatsoever. It's also survived me tossing the PDP into my range bag dozens of times, and it getting banged around against an armorer's wrench and other objects. So with that, I'm confident in this optic's durability under common real-world use. The majority of gun owners shoot far less often than I do, so most watching shouldn't have any issues with durability. Onto the glass clarity, the glass clarity on this optic is acceptable, but not perfect. With most dots this size, you get a pretty significant blue tint and some distortion around the edge of the window. On a pistol, this doesn't bother me at all, and it's still great to use, but on a long gun, I can see that being an issue. Speaking to that, I have no experience doing this, but this, like most micro red dots, can be mounted to long guns, less often as an independent red dot, more often as a backup sight for a magnified optic. 
The distortion in glass tint might make this a frustrating choice for the long gun though. A budget optic that is one third to cost and still lightweight like the Sig Romeo MSR or Romeo 5 have less tint and distortion and I think would be a better option for a long gun. For an offset optic though, I can see it being a decent choice. When you are mostly using the magnified scope, your backup unmagnified optic having some distortion around the edges doesn't seem too bad, but I'll try it out at some point and give a more concrete answer in the future. Thankfully, I haven't had any issues with this red dot that would warrant a warranty claim, so I can't speak with any first-hand experience about Holosun's customer support. I've heard it's decent, though. Hopefully I never have to test it out, but we will see. So all in all, would I recommend this optic? I would say yes for use on handguns. It has some redundant features I doubt I'll ever use, but for the price, it's a decently robust optic that has not let me down. For use on rifles, I'll have to report back in a different video, but I give it a thumbs up for handguns. But whether you use this optic on a handgun or not matters a lot less than fitness and training. Get some cardio in and actually shoot your guns instead of just posting pictures of them. Take care. That stovepipe is off. Well.